What's up guys, Joe Snow right here. So in today's video, I decided to start something new, a new series that will be on how to build your own application for iOS 10 on your iPhone, iPad or iPod. And we're going to use Xcode for that. So this will be a beginner tutorial on how to build your own application. But we're not going to start with a simple Hello World app because nobody needs that. We're going to start with a real app that can detect information about the device, which will be pretty cool. And we're going to use Objective-C as our main language for the moment, even though Swift is a little bit easier. Objective-C is way better because you can use it to also make Cydia tweaks in the future. And we're going to get into that. So there is no better way to know your device and to get the most of it than programming your own applications. So if you want to learn iOS better, this is where you start. Okay, so uh, if you don't have Xcode installed, go ahead in the uh, App Store on a Mac and download it for free. Uh, and if you're on Windows, I'm afraid you cannot do that. Xcode is only available for a Mac because you know that you make applications for OS 6, iOS, you need an OS 6 development kit, but you can virtualize OS 6 on VirtualBox or install a Hackintosh and so on. So you can get on that. But after you download it, Xcode looks like this. I'm running the version 8.1, which is compatible with iOS 10.2 as well. And here in this uh, tab in here, you have the recent projects you've been working on. But in order to create a new project, you can simply click in here, file new project, or simply go in here, create new Xcode project. And you have a couple of options in here. As you can see, you can make an iOS app, a watchOS app, tvOS, macOS, or cross-platform. We're going to stick with iOS for the moment in this video and with single view, as it's a little bit simpler for those who are beginners. So I'm going to click next. In here, you need to add a program name. What is the program name of your app? Well, in my case, it will be iSniff, because as I said, it will be an application that will detect some information about the device. Something simple to start with. And devices will be either universal or iPhone or iPad. I'm going to select iPhone for mine. Do not check anything in here and on the languages, you have uh, to select between Swift and Objective-C. In this video, we're going to start with Objective-C, and I say it's a little bit um, better for beginners because you get to also be able to make Cydia tweaks. If you have this checked in here, uncheck it, you don't need it for the moment, and simply create your project. I recommend you making a projects folder somewhere, like I did, but you can start without one if you want. So. In this part, if you never made an app, I'm going to try to explain as uh, easy as I can. In this part, you have all the files that are contained in your project. If you click in here on this blueprint icon, you have all the uh, settings of your application, the name, the build number, the identifier, the theme for building it, the iOS version for which it's targeted, and so on. You can select in here, for example, if you want to target a lower firmware, but not lower than 8.0 you can select in here. Also, you can switch between devices. So there's no problem if you selected iPhone in the main screen and you decided you want to make it for iPad as well. You can change that anytime. The capabilities, the resources and so on. But we're not going to get into all of them. We'll only get into the things that we need. So at first you have the view controller and the viewcontroller.m will hold the entire code of your application. The H means headers, we're going to work with that. And the main storyboard is actually the design, the user interface of your application. So let's start with building some simple user interface, but first we need some icons. Uh, here in the assets.xca assets, or C assets, sorry, you have app icon. And in here you can add a lot of things, but as you can see, it has 2x, 3x, 2x, 3x again, and so on. What are these? Well you need to make icons for various types of screen. For example, for iPhone screen, iPad screen, iPhone can be either smaller or bigger, depending if, if, if it's a, um, an iPhone 6S, for example, or an iPhone 7S, uh, 7 Plus, sorry. So the screen might be a little bit bigger. So how you, you do this? I made a pretty damn simple icon in here. Didn't want to lose a lot of time with this. And we're going to use an application called Prepo in order to create our own icon. It's way simpler than making it your own. And you just need a big icon. This one is pretty damn big. I don't know what size it is, but it's big. And if I drop it in here, this application will take care of my icon and it will build it up 
of course, automatically for all kind of sizes. And now if I click export in here, it will automatically export it, but I need to make a new folder because I don't want them scattered all around my screen. Icons. It's pretty good to start with your icon. You just want to make sure you have the icon of your application already created when you start. Right. And making an application without an icon, it's basically very bad. Go ahead in the icons folder and you will have all of them. Imagine if you had to multiply this icon in all these sizes. Do not rename them, them though, because those names are already created to suit the uh, project completely. So I'm gonna go back in here, uh, try to identify my um, window in here and I'm going to simply drop them like this. And there you go. As you can see, we dropped them in here and we have them for various sizes. This is pretty important because we're going to need to use them later. Good. So how we're going to continue? Well, I'm going to go to main storyboard and design a little bit of the interface. If you want to design a, an interface, you have here a lot of things that can be used. Text, buttons, sliders, switches, progress bars, and so on. If you like this series and we're going to continue it, I'm going to get into all of them. But for the moment, I just need a couple of labels. So we're going to write in here in the search box label and we're going to simply drag it on a screen. If you drag it, you can also align it with the screen and so on. I'm going to align it in here and rename it running iOS, for example. And then we need another label that will hold the actual value. So I'm going to write uh, 0.0, .0 make it a little bit bigger, just in case it's a big number. And then I'm going to con continue by copying and passing it. You can use Control C, Control V for that. And I'm going to rename this one as, um, I don't know, device type. As I said, it will be a simple app just to let you understand how it works. Mm, unknown for the moment. These are the default values, but they'll never be used. So we're going to change them. Now, what we need to do, we need to make the actual pointers to this, uh, these things. So we're going to press this little uh, crossing circle in here and it will load this. We're going to close this by pressing this button and we're going to also get rid of this tab like this to have more working area. Using this slider, you can see your user interface. And what we want to do is to make sure in here, we change from viewcontroller.m to viewcontroller.age. And you're going to click on it, right click and draw the line in here. Then in here, you need to name it somehow. I'm going to name that one for device type, simply device type. You start with a small letter and uh, the next uh, word is with capital. Right, make sure it's outlet and UI label and click connect and it will create the property automatically. Then we need to make the new one. Click on it, right click and keep on holding the right click, just drop it in here and rename it iOS version like this. We're going to connect them and now we can work with them. So how do we do that? Well, it's pretty simple. We can go back to the uh, normal view by going like this, get ourselves the um, panels again and go to the viewcontroller.m. Now we're going to code the, um, the application. It's pretty simple. And we're going to go into view the load because we want to check them at the um, start of the application, not after pressing a button. To do that, you need to load your function in here in view the load. This is a automatically generated, you don't have to code it yourself. Every project you make has this thing already included. So we're going to, to use NS string for that. So NS string and using this star, we're going to give a name to it that we're going to use later. I'm going to name it mm, version like this equals, and we need two pairs of square brackets. Then UI device, we're going to call now a class UI device. This contains a lot of information about the device and we call current device. As you can see, it gives you some autocomplete. Then scrolling down, we go after the first bracket, give a space and system uh, version like this. And we're going to simply use the semicolon to end this. 
And now we need to call somehow this thing because now we have this little warning light in here because the version, it's not used anywhere. So we're going to use self because we're calling or cells or or label and we're going to use iOS version label with that value. So the text of this because it's a label and contains a text will be version. And we end with semicolon. Most of the things end with a semicolon in here. So what we did, we created a variable called version and that version will hold the value of UI device current device system version in here. And after that, we're going to call the iOS version label that we declared in the um, age file in here. And then we're going to change that text from 00, 0 that we declared initially into the text hold by version. And we're going to do the same. We're going to copy this to shorten the video. But I'm going to rename that. You cannot have two of them with the same name. And I'm going to name it device. And sorry, this one will hold system, sorry, model. We're going to use model in here. And this will get ourselves, whether it's an iPad, an iPod, or an iPod, an, I, an iPad, an iPod, or an iPhone. Right, so we're going to change iOS version though this time with, I think it was a uh, device. Let me try to do this. So self dot device type, of course, from here, dot text equals, and we're going to use devices value like this. And our first application is basically done, but we're going to go in here and we have a couple of things to modify first. We need a team. In order to do that, you need to log in into your own account, into your own um, uh, iTunes account here in Xcode in preferences and then you will be able to generate your own a uh, team so you need to go in here to preferences and in my case i am already logged in but the session has expired it will happen sometimes so you need to log in again and it will ask you for your password if you log in you should be good to go in here and then you need to select again uncheck this enable automatic and select the team and you will be good to go at the next build. So how we change the app icon? The app icon can be used in from the assets and you need to name it app icon and the launch image as well. To add our own uh, uh, icon for the app icon. So we're going to go back to assets and I renamed one of the icons to have app icon.png uh, extension. For that, I'm going to go back in here and to the assets and drop it like this. Alrighty. So uh, I'm going to, to do this. Sorry. Simple, you need to go here in the app icon and you need to insert them. So we're going to find the 2x and 3x. So you need to look on the names of them, for example, and I'm going to have the 3x and 2x like this and this in here. Again, you need 2x and 3x for that, so 3x in here and a 2x like this. You need to get them by the, um, by the size, 3x, 3x and 2x, 2x and we should be good to go. Now if I'm going to go back in here into the uh, general settings and I select from app icon, you can see it already has the, uh, the icon selected. So the application has its icon. I'm going to connect the device and we're going to test it right now. So I connected my iPod Touch and as you can see, you have it right here in the devices section and the errors have disappeared if you did this correctly. Now we only have a couple of warnings. We're not going to get them into consideration and you need to press that play button in here. Now I'm going to open um, QuickTime Player for you to be able to see what I'm doing on a screen of the phone and uh, it should start in a couple of seconds. I'm sorry if it gets a little bit longer video, but yeah, I just wanted to show everything uh, correctly. All right, so now you can see the screen of my iPod in here, and you can see that we built the application. For some reason, it didn't get the icon, but I know why. 
it's because we didn't select an icon, an icon for this size of the screen. It's not a problem, it's fixable, but I'm not going to get into it. And if we open the application, you can see it does what we programmed it to do. It detects the uh, iOS running on the device and the device type, being it an iPod Touch. And this is our own application, the first application we made for, uh, for iOS. So if you wanna get the project yourself, the link is in the description down below if you want to tamper with it a little bit. So yeah, this is basically it guys. If you like this kind of videos, drop me a thumb up down below and tell me in the comment section, give me a feedback for that. And till the next time, peace out and happy learning.